Imagine adventuring around the world for one year, hitting up new amazing places every day, all while working from your laptop. How much do you think that would cost you? In this video, we'll reveal our one year digital nomad budget and answer the question once and for all, how much does it cost to travel the world for one year as a digital nomad? Let's roll the intro. Okay guys, so the reality is that one year traveling could look very different from one digital nomad to another. Yeah, it all depends on where you're traveling, how fast you're traveling, your travel lifestyle that you choose, and a ton of other factors. To help figure out your own budget, I made a quick cheat sheet that you can download in the description below. So before we get into all the hard numbers of our travel budget example, let's look at what kind of year of travel we're actually talking about. That way, once we do get to the numbers, you'll be able to imagine in your mind what kind of lifestyle that money can actually buy. I think you're gonna be surprised. Okay, so here is a quick breakdown of our year. Month one, we spent traveling pretty fast in the Philippines. We started in the United States and we flew through Philippines. We arrived in Manila and then we went around an island called Palawan. We were traveling really fast and we were barely working at all. We probably moved to a new place every two or three days doing tours all the time. And this was one of our more expensive months just because we were focused on more on travel and less on work. Okay, we spent the month going to amazing beaches, doing island hopping tours and exploring caves. We spent most of the month staying in kind of expensive hostels. I never thought I would say hostels are expensive but a lot of these usually costed between 15 to 25 dollars per person and for philippines for two people that's almost more than what you could get an airbnb for but we wanted the social aspect we had a couple of unexpected expenses at this point because we had to buy plane tickets two separate times because we missed our first flight due to a typhoon we got stuck in the reason we were able to travel so fast like this is because I earn the bulk of our income with freelance writing and that can be pretty flexible. If you want to learn how to start freelance writing, get it off the ground, I made a free course that I'll link below. Okay, next up, Thailand. We spent three months in Thailand mixing it up between fast travel and slow travel. The first month we were in Chiang Mai, we rent a cheap apartment, we ate a lot of street food and we did a lot of tours around. Then we moved to Bangkok for one month where we stayed in this awesome luxury condo and we have a video about that here. I got in a motorcycle accident and had to have surgery in Bangkok and all of that was covered by travel insurance but most of that month was spent recovering, so we didn't really go out that much. The rest of the time, we went to Krabi, Rela Beach, and we did a bunch of other short trips. Okay. We started off by exploring Siem Reap and Angkor Wat, and then we moved down to the amazing islands of Koh Rong and Koh Rong Samluen. That's when we got a stock for three months. Yep, that's when the world shut down and we got kind of trapped on this island for three months and it was actually kind of awesome. We stayed in a beautiful hotel for a very cheap price. Yeah, right alongside the beach, this beautiful bungalow. We had the whole entire beach to ourselves practically and the best part was we were barely spending any money. We spent our time there just working full time and exploring the island. After three months on the island, we finally called it quits and moved to the big city of Phnom Penh. I had to have another emergency surgery on my wrist, which was also covered by travel insurance. And there we stayed in an Airbnb for just two weeks before deciding to make the long journey all the way back to the US of A. 
Okay, guys, so take a second to give us a like if you like this video so far. All right, moving on, the United States of America. Now, full disclosure, we spent two months visiting family, so our expenses were basically nothing. But for the purpose of this budget, we just averaged all of our other months together to add up to our total. But really, if you live the digital normal life, you probably will visit in family anyways. After overstaying our welcome maybe a little bit too much, we had pretty much nowhere else to go because all the borders were closed, so we decided to start a whole new type of adventure. Van life! We bought an old vintage van named Salsamobile for about $4,500. It took about another $2,000 in repairs and fitting it out with everything we needed to work on the road. And so for a total of $6,500, we had our new home on wheels. We spent the next three months exploring amazing places around the US. Every few days, we'd go to a different national park. We went to Grand Teton National Park, Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, Olympic all these amazing places and we realized that traveling in a van like this is one of the cheapest ways to travel in the u.s you can see a more detailed budget here okay we cook 90 percent of our meals i cook and the, our biggest spend were just food gas and stupid mistakes stupid mistakes always my fault obviously we spent a lot of money on the brakes that I burned in the mountains and also the drone that I drowned in the river. But overall, we were surprised how cheap that was. So guys, during this whole entire year of adventures, how much do you think we spent? We spent a grand total of... Dun -dun 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 -dun, drum roll! $27,000. $27, but... Wait a second, that doesn't include the money we'll get when we sell the van and we're pretty sure we'll make more than what we spent. But let's just say that we break even, that brings the total down to only $20,500 for two people for one year of adventures. In other words, the money that we spent per month was around $1,708. Could you believe that guys? or just $854 per person. Now, in a normal, boring life in the US, in many places, that wouldn't even cover the cost of a rent alone. That's crazy. So as you can see, you don't have to wait your whole life to save a bunch of money to go and make your dream life. If you want to learn exactly how we actually earn our money as we're traveling, make sure to check out this top video up here. And for a complete blueprint on how to become a digital nomad, this bottom video is for you.